Pedagogical Diagnoses in Context. This is a One School for All lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, at Estfold University College, which I would like my students to watch by the 17th of October 2023. So we're going to look at the relationship between society and diagnoses. A, a simple version of this question is, why should something that takes place in between my ears affect my behavior with my fingers and my legs and my my social relationships in such culturally specific ways or why should the break of a neuron back here make a person suddenly swear in a particular language um, or think they are napoleon or suddenly really be frightened of squirrels and getting to the bottom of this this relationship between something which is very anatomical on the one hand and which is something very historical on the other will i think help us to understand a little bit more about the social and medical definitions of disability that we'll be talking about this week so in this video we're going to talk about the emotional disturbances that we've already discussed and about the French Revolution and about the classroom. So the um, the emotional disturbances that we've already discussed um, were presented by um, Tolson in 2019 um, where he presented this data um, that the emotional disturbances um, which have triggered special needs education in DC public schools um, were 24% um, of them um, were black females and 74% were black males and only 2% were other and of those 2% 0% were white male so the question is um, does that mean um, emotional disturbance is a a black male thing because emotional disturbance was also the second most frequent kind of special needs education trigger amongst black males uh, learning difficulty I think was that was the top so was there some kind of relationship and there is a statistical relationship I mean that's undeniable um, but but what is it that causes it and as we talked about before, this data that Tolson presents means that we need an account of emotions in order to understand the statistics about emotional disturbance, and therefore of psychology as such. And whatever account of emotions we're going to have, it's going to involve some kind of relationship between an environment and our emotional reaction to them. And we can then we have then got into the use to. Um, categorizing that as rational or irrational. I have a very rational fear of heights, for example. As some people have an irrational fear of cats. Um, now, those have two completely different statuses. If you are scared of heights, then you should be scared of heights. And that fear of heights is going to keep you alive. Um, but your fear of cats is going to prevent you from many, many moments of joy. So the, the big question... Um, that we can ask to this this chart is what is it that caused the emotional disturbance was it the irrationality in my heart or in my mind or was it the situation in the um in the school which should not have um happened are we asking people to deal with a part of the world that nobody should be requested to deal with you shouldn't have to go to racist schools or be treated in a racist manner um, and and writing that um, emotional disturbance off as an abnormality is a problem because you should react emotionally to injustice. So so that was that was what we've already discussed. Yeah, and and the question, what is it that caused the emotional disturbance, can be traced back to um, the French Revolution. Um, we should really have got used to this relationship between um, psychiatry or psychology on the one hand and our uh, historical situation um, on the other because the link between these two is extremely old. Now, in the Anglophone world, it is rarely remembered that the liberation of the imprisoned mad 
um, at Bicetre, not the Bastille, <laughs> um, uh, but the Bicetre, um, which is a big hospital in France um, in the classical age, was just the other side of the coin of the storming of the Bastille during the French Revolution. Both of those were thought and re- thought of and remembered as big moments of liberation. Um, so the picture here is of the storming of the Bastille. Um, but what happened at Bicetre was that um, this great anthropologist, no, um, what would we say, philanthropist, that's it, philanthropist, psychiatrist, um, Philippe Pinel, um, went to Bicetre, where lots of the um, people who were then considered insane were kept under lock and key. Um, and he went there together with this um, deputy of the new revolutionary um, regime. And, um, and, and when they both arrived and Pinel wanted to release these people from the prison um, and, um, and the deputy um, thought that he was um, being too rash, Pinel claimed that, I am convinced that these alienated are only so intractable intractable because they are deprived of air and liberty so the big question is why is it that's making these people insane is it that they are ill that they are just mad people and we can just find some way of coping with them or is it that they have been kept in hospital and Pinel just made these experiments and lots of this experiment was taken up time and time again but if you release these people maybe they will act um, in a perfectly acceptable way and the experiments um, went to the extent that he would then um, employ these people and um, and they were um, reintegrated in society because this experiment showed that it was the prison that was making the madness, not the madness which, um, which provoked the need for um, prison. Now, this is an extremely symbolic moment for the revolution and a founding moment for later, more humane models of psychiatry. Foucault um, himself, who we've uh, got on the reading list, um, um, in his um, first famous work, The History of Madness, said, The lucid firmness of Pinel, who masters with a single word and a single gesture the twin animal furies that roar and watch him warily, and the wisdom that allowed him to recognize which was the greater danger between the raving mad and the bloodthirsty deputy of the convention. Such images echo down the ages, carrying the full weight of legend. And Foucault here is is contrasting the um, the the people within the prison who would then become civilized as soon as you release them, and the uh, the regime of the bloodthirsty regime, of course, of the terror um, of the French Revolution, who were insisting on locking lots of people up. So this symbol that we are maybe creating illnesses by our society um, rather than reacting to illness by a tolerant society uh, is an old, uh, an old symbol and it's an old idea. And of course, these are, um, these are ideas that we hear in the current debate about special needs education. Skeptics say that many of the diagnoses that trigger special needs education are created by and in the classroom. For example, of course you get ADHD pupils if you design classrooms around sitting still for hours on end. That's not natural. Of course children are going to react and the ADHD is their reaction. And that there is no doubt whatsoever that some diagnoses that we rest, that we rely upon are actually created by the way people are treated. And we've used emotional disturbance as an example of one of those. Um, and, and there's no doubt about that. And there is similarly no doubt that all diagnoses have culturally specific expressions and consequences. So um, just identifying the culturally specific way in which somebody has reacted to or treated their diagnosis doesn't mean that the diagnosis is not re- real. We are historical beings. That does not make diagnoses unsig- in, unscientific. So we've got, um, we've got a classroom and we've got to live between these insights um, that all diagnoses are historic and some diagnoses are actually not abnormalities, they are rational rea- reactions to the society that we have p- been part of creating. So we need to push back to some diagnoses, 
Uh, human diversity is such that one school is maybe not ideal for all, and we need to be flexible. Um, and we sh need to expect pupils to react to our inflexibility in ways that sound like and look like protest or irrationality. We need to read diagnoses culturally as well as scientifically, because sometimes what look like diagnoses are actually reactions to society. And we need to learn to relate to different kinds of people, both when they tell us about our society in insights that we would not necessarily get from any other perspective. We wouldn't get the same insights about society from people that don't have ADHD or don't have OCD and so on. But we also need to be able to listen to when these people are saying with their symptoms that they are suffering. Because yes, some classrooms make it difficult for some people, but some diagnoses make it difficult for some people as well. And if your observation of special needs leads you to ignore the distress of your pupils, then you have fundamentally failed to be a compassionate fellow human being. And in the autumn of 2023, I think we are, or we should be painfully aware of the extreme consequences that the failure of human compassion can have.